we go again, boys. Oh, thanks for a smashing time. One from me. And one from my friend. Thank you. Always good to do business with you. <laughs> Look, do you uh, have a nice time then, darling? Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. My pleasure. Constable. My room been done out, has it? Favourite soap been placed in the shower? Mini bar all stocked up. Belgian chocolates placed on the pillow, have they? Evening, Gov. Welcome back. General. No, go sorry. Back from London, yeah. Doesn't matter who with. That's right. New number? Mm -hmm. Well, you better give it to me, haven't you? There we are. Got it. Okay, well, two weeks then. I look forward to that. Yes. Yes. Honestly. Yeah. That's right. OK, well, two weeks then. Listen, darling, I'm going to have to phone you back. There's someone at the door, OK? Right, yeah, I'll phone you back soon. Yeah. Right. OK, lots of love. Bye. No. No! Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Why do they do it? making a mess on the pavement. Not much of a mess as it happens. Yeah, but why not just a ham full of pills and a nice cosy bottle of scotch, eh? Well, who was she? Uh, Florence Dora Allott, age 48, divorce. Recently suspended from a job as a clerical assistant in the accounts department, County Hall. Suspended? Yeah, pending an investigation into misappropriation of funds. Ah, oh, well, at least we got a motive. All nice and neat. Anything unusual? You don't think she was uh, pushed or thrown? The only unusual feature was the fact that she was naked. And the way she fell. Apparently with her arms outstretched. Maybe she was trying to fly. Poor soul. She did a strip. Sex in it somewhere. Man. Well, I hope she had a fun out of him first. Ah, it's only ever short term, though, that kind of fun, isn't it? Sex. Do you have a problem with short term fun, Sergeant? I don't. Right, where do we go? To the sister now? Aye, but do the cricket club on the way, sir. Mr. Mullet says it's urgent. 
It's urgent, the cricket club. Huh? I had to look around before I went to bed, about midnight. Everything seemed fine. I was away all day yesterday, watching England deliver the coup de grace at Lord's. You see it? No, didn't. So what we're looking at is a forced entry in the early hours of the morning. Oh, it didn't take much force, sir. Your security system needs an overhaul. I know, it's, um, it's on the agenda for our next committee meeting. So, nothing is missing, just all this stuff smashed, eh? That's about it. It's only cheap crockery, really. But I almost didn't want to bother you, but... About what? Oh, for God's sake, Clifford. Tell him about the other times. Here, Cole. Down in one. Go on, son. Good boy. Well done. Good boy. How's he doing? Well, I took it for his dad, didn't you? Didn't you, Cole? Good boy. All right, Katie. Doesn't seem to be much worse. He is worse. I see him every day. You're not around enough. He's back. OK, OK, OK. Why don't we just go for it, eh? Eh? Why don't we just do it right away? Yeah? No. Why don't you go and get the flight tickets, yes? It'll give you something to do. It'll give you a bit of a lift. And get, get your mum organised to look after Katie, OK? No, we can't. Yes, we yet. can. We can. We can. Trust me. Hear that, Cole? You are going to go to Texas to get better. Yeah. Hey. Mm. Listen, I'm late. I'm going to have to go. All right? I'll see you later. Bye. Right. Bye. Are you going to make the weekend? No, Joy, I can't. It's nights all the way, honestly. Just get yourself working. No way. How are you feeling? You didn't actually see her do it, did Harvey, you? will you not come here? Please. Please. Pass on a little while. Well, tell him I got the message. No, no. No. I'm not any sort of girl between Harvey. Please. Sorry. See you tonight, then. This bank holiday shindig. Yeah. Don't speak. Okay? Okay. Just some extra gear, that's all. Pads, bats. Suddenly they disappeared. And a set of scorecards. Well, I don't know what else we can do, sir, apart from advising you on your security. Oh, have you got your keys? I suppose it's too much to expect a big forensic job. Uh, fingerprinting, etc. Yes, it is too much to expect, Mrs Hastings. Oh, it's depressing vandalism, a sort of class envy. We never met it in Oxford. Good. I keep my keys with me all the time, Inspector. Did you have them with you yesterday? I always have them with me. Oh, I see. And uh, your keys, Mrs Hastings? I, I have a key to hallowed ground. Keyholders must be players. And or committee members. Oh. Douglas Houseman, uh, Bob Bowker, and Norman Mullet. That is, of course, Superintendent Mullet of your division. Yes, of course. Sir. Barbara Dutton, sister of Mrs. Florence Allard. My twin sister. May found that in her handbag. I've never seen him before. He couldn't have been a boyfriend. Florence didn't know any men. We're not attractive to men. Well, maybe he thought Florence was. No. 
why her marriage didn't last. I told her it wouldn't. She'd be back asking me to take her in. And she was. And how did that work out? She was miserable. But we'd have got over it in time. She just had to accept that that's how it was. Being together. Her and me. There was no need. I'm sorry, Miss Dutton, but I... I'm afraid I must ask you. Did you know anything about the bit of bother that your sister was in? What bother? You're saying you didn't know your sister was suspended from her work? No. No, I didn't. She went out of here same time every morning. She came home same time every night. Well, it appears that your sister was being investigated because, uh, well, not to mince words, lifting £2,000 out of the till. I don't believe it. What did she do with it? That's what they'd like to know at County Hall. Never. She was my sister. I knew her like nobody else. Oh, well, I mean, <clears throat> would you wear, uh, you know, things like this? Shoes, like that. No, her sister said that she never went out, except to visit a friend in Loughborough once a month. When we found the friend, she said that um, she hadn't seen her for a year. I've got to be the fellow. Mm. Excuse, Gov. Mm -hmm. Mr. Muller would like a word with you. Is he still playing with a straight bat? Sorry? Oh, never mind. Yes, OK. When I finish my lunch. Thank you. This business at the cricket club, Jack, um, any leads at all? No, not yet. I thought it might be a bit of malice, you know, on the inside. Oh, you did? Interesting. Mm. I thought I might have a word with Sandy Longford. I'm having a drink with him tonight. You know, it's very hot on sport, is Sandy. Yes, yes. No, no, no. no I, I wouldn't advise that. No. I don't think we want to alert the press to, um, well, to anything. Oh, no. Right. I understand. Of course. Mm -hmm. Mum's the word, eh? <clears throat> is Mr. Hastings your new captain? He's uh, not been here very long, has he? No, no, he came from Oxford last year. We were very lucky to get him. Mind you, I think Denton's been a bit of a culture shock for him. Even more so for his wife. <laughs> Still, um, decent people. I want you to look upon this as a public relations job. Good evening, Miss Fanshawe. Good evening, Mr. Dole. You're looking particularly beautiful this evening. Yeah. There was something about a ex-player with a grievance. Streaker in the match with Birmingham a few weeks back. <laughs> Streaker? What mm, name? Um... Bowker, I think. Or Bowker. What Bowker? Well, he's a committee member. <laughs> What's he doing streaking? <laughs> well, I can't work that one out. Not a thing, then, is it? This is Hastings, this is charity. He's the treasurer. Local branch. Should be pleased with this, gone like a bomb. Yeah, well, come on, let's move. Music's loud enough to do my eardrums in. Oh, no, 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 I can't. I've uh, got to wait for Gordon Banks to sign my souvenir program. 
You what? You're not. Te- oh, thank goodness for that. You're telling me an old cynic like you, <laughs> waiting to have his program signed by his hero, is for the boy. Oh yeah, I know. That's what they all say. Dear, look at the state of this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need. Perfect. Trying to show me up. Leave us, Cyril. She's just having a good time, that's all. Look, our taxi's waiting. We'll drop her back. This uh, won't be in the paper. <laughs> ah, I sure think so. Do you like your programme signed? I'll do it. Uh, two drinks here. No, it's all right. Not for me, thank you. No, no, no. Doesn't further his bid for respectability, that sort of thing. It was his wife, was it? Yeah. A beauty queen, isn't he? Ex-Miss Denton. He was one of the judges. It's all a bit iffy in those days. His property deals, football interests. Now he's going for an OBE on the charity circuit. <laughs> Just a minute. Oh! 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 One dancing with the girl in the green dress with the twinkles on it. Don't know. No. No her though. Jane Fanshaw. Mm. Solicitor. Fanshaw and Winters. Uh, she has got an OBE. Services to the Girl Guide movement. We did a feature. You're the font of all knowledge, aren't you, Sandy? Mm. It really makes it worthwhile me knowing you. So, weather-wise, after last night's showers, it looks as if we're in for another long, hot day in Denton. Good morning. Really to get you up and about. Bring up. Who brought me home? Yvonne and that overdressed poser she goes with. Did you go out again afterwards? Your car was in front of the garage. Where would you be going? I don't know, Cyril. Maybe I was just running away. You don't go oh. anywhere without me. I've told you. <gasps> got a message for you, Jack, from the uh, upstairs. Oh, hang on. I'm trying to clear up that suicide. I've got a lead on the bloke in the photograph. Sorry. Cricket club was done again last night. You were out there fast, the bosses. Well, he would, wouldn't he? Anything taken this time? Load of silver trophies, cups and that. Oh, um, Mr. Mullet's name was on one of them. <laughs> How do you see Mallet in his day? 
Behind the wicket, Sergeant. Bit of a Botham. Bit of a gooch. Or just a bit of a prep. What do you mean cricket, sir? Mm. Oh, they're only names to me, sir. Oh, yeah, well, I suppose it would be. I don't go much in sport. No? Well, not in England. Highland Games now, that's different. That's real man stuff. Oh, yeah. Done a bit of that, have you? Tossing the caber, putting the haggis? No, sir, not recently. Hmm. No, well, you'd need the Highlands for that, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's not only that, sir. You've got to be fit. You've got to keep at it. The practice. The bodybuilding. Not much point at our age, eh? With the batteries running down. What do you mean the battery's running? Your battery Alpha may be Bravo running. Alpha Bravo to 3-6, from control. 3-6, receiving. Suspicious death reported at 42 Grandison Street. Repeat, 42 Grandison Street. 3-6, we'll respond. All right, Sergeant, come on, let's do a Yui. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well? His landlord arrived home from holiday this morning. I saw blood coming from under the first floor door, sir. Must have taken the glow out of his suntan. Are you all right? Yeah. Do we know him? No. His name's Damien Law. Mm. There's a lot of blood, sir. What's that smell? I'd say stumbled. An accident. Smells like murder to me. Bloody murder. Well, I don't know, it's funny, it's like a hotel room, isn't it? Very impersonal. Nothing here to say who he was. Yeah, he kept himself fit. You don't often see such good muscle tone. All right, so, when did it happen? Between one and three this morning, I'd say. After sex and a massage. Not necessarily in that order. Massage? The scent is oil of sandalwood. He'd been rubbed with it all over. Oh, that's what it was. Well, it certainly wasn't theft. He had over 300 quid in his jacket pocket, but nothing else. No credit cards, checkbook, no photos. As though he was just passing through. I wonder if he saw her do it. We shall never know. Well, 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 well. Thank you, God, for this little gift. What? It's a telephone number. Probably local Chinese restaurant. Anyway, I think... Ah, Sergeant, well, what do you got? Not a lot, sir. Confirmation, he had a girlfriend, maybe two, and there were rows, sometimes late at night. Well, what do you think, Doc? Could a woman have done it? Certainly. Hefty push. Of course, uh, could have been overactive foreplay. Well, if you ask me, that is where poor little plain Florence Allott spent her ill-gotten gains. That uh, looked like it. Uh -huh. Alan. Yeah, she had a couple of grand's worth of fun out of him and then topped herself when she was rumbled. Or when he ditched her. What I can't understand, though, is what did he get out of it? Apart from her picking up the bills, I mean. I mean, you know, a young, good-looking fellow like that with a good body, he'd want younger flesh, wouldn't he? What would he find in a middle-aged woman? If I knew the answer to that, sir, I'd still be married. Oh, what happened to you, then? Oh, I thought that sort of thing was all over. I had settled for companionship. What, well, and she hadn't? She went off with a professional darts player. Right. 
no need for you to hang about. I'll deal with Miss Fanshawe. You get off to the cricket club, make a start, all right? So you first met him in a bookshop, Miss Fanshawe. When was this? Jane? Oh, it must have been uh, four, five months ago. Four of... Oh, that's the dress that you wore last night. Did you wash it before you went to work this morning? Do you usually wash your things after you've just used them? Usually. I'm afraid they'll still have to go to the lab, Miss Fanshawe. Can you tell me what Mr. Law did for a living? He was, uh, he was a salesman. Office equipment, I think. Hmm. Where? Do you know what company? We didn't talk about that kind of thing. What did you talk about? We didn't talk very much at all. And can you tell me where this came in? The sandalwood oil? We, we always had a massage first. It was one of our little rituals. We could never wait to get our hands on each other. You'll need this, a list of the missing items. Right. Thank you, Danny. Oh. I see we've been fobbed off with an inferior officer. Make sure you complain. Right. Hello there. Detective Sergeant Prentice. Did Damien ever stay here overnight, eh? No. Why not? I have curious neighbours. And a reputation to keep up with. I'm unmarried. There's the church. Oh, yes. And the girl guide movement, I remember. Did you ever row with Damien? You know, shout at each other? Oh, we had lover's tips. I see. Did he ever give you any gifts? Well, no, not often. I was better placed. Not even a photo. He didn't give you a photo. Have you got a photograph of him? No. Oh, he didn't like it. I don't have one. There's nothing. There's nothing left. Were you the only woman in his life? Well, of course I was. What do you think I am, some kind of tart? No, I was thinking more about him. How dare you! I'll need to talk to you again, Miss Fanshawe. Make yourself available, won't you? Didn't say anything about Florence Alitkov. No, I'm saving her till later. You hang on here till the doctor comes. She's lying. What do you think? She's definitely holding something back. Yeah, I know. Oh, that phone number you asked me to check of. Yeah. It's new. Change of address. Subscribe is Mr. Bruce Martin, 11 Coulshaw Avenue. Yeah. All right, thank you. Oh, uh, just a minute. Um, <clears throat> you, know, um, you know that stuff on the uh, washing line, the, uh, well, you know, the black un underwear stuff? I mean, do you see a woman like that wearing that? Yeah. Girl guide? She probably wears it under a uniform. No, could we... Uh... Talk about the key holders again. You mentioned Mr. Boker. You've been having trouble with him, have you? Have you been listening to gossip? Why are we talking about club members instead of the local riffraff? They've been building up to this. A full-scale break-in. No, 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 sir. Not a break-in. Oh, yes. Your pavilion was entered and a window was smashed. But from the inside and made to look like a break-in. 
Are you sure? No, sir. I'm not sure. I'm positive. All right, what's happening then? Where's the information pouring in, is it? A deluge? Nothing, Gov. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Cheers, Gov. Yeah. Well, his landlord said he kept himself to himself, lived there three months, went away a lot, short visits, very quiet. Oh, and uh, no account anywhere. No bank, no building society, no credit company. Nothing. Well, there was a guy taking pictures at the ball. We're going through his stuff now. Yeah. Very camera shy was our Damien. Yeah. You can bet your bottom dollar there's a wife and a kid in it somewhere. Well, there's two Damien Lyles in the whole area. One's eight and the other six months. His clothes that were in the wardrobe, they're all nearly new. We might get a lead if we find out where he bought them. Not that he probably bought them himself. He was living off women. A gigolo type. Oh, I could leave home for a bit of that. Oh, do we? Oh, oh, yeah, I mean, it's totally anonymous. No baggage. Nothing but good times and presents. Women throwing themselves at you. Yes, yes, yes. Older women, older women. Older, older women. women can be real goers. Yes, so I've heard. Well, listen, I'm going over to see this Mr Bruce Martin. Not that he's ever heard of uh, our Damien, I'm sure. You're thinking what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Damien Law's not his real name. Who the bloody hell are we looking for, then? Look, anyone reports a missing person, I want to know. All right, come on, carry on. What sort of women would you say Florence Allott and Jane Fanshawe were? Well, Middle-aged, fussy, plain. Yeah. But they both had this vibrant, secret life, didn't they? That somehow Damien was able to tap into. <laughs> both had a need and somehow he satisfied it. It's funny that really, because it's usually the men that have the need. I don't believe in need in sexual matters. No, no. What do you believe in then, Sergeant? I believe in desires that can and should be kept under control. Really? Your missus didn't believe in that, though, did she? She gave in to temptation. She'll regret it. <laughs> and you, sir, hmm? you lost your wife. Yes. Then I had a relationship and I let that go. I sometimes wonder why now. Is he there? Oh, no, he isn't. He hasn't shown up today. He hasn't rung either. Maybe he slept in. No wonder working all hours. It's a bloody nuisance having no phone there. I need him. Will you get on with it? Listen, when he does show up, tell him the tickets to come for Texas, will you? Yeah, yeah, we'll do. Do it! This man who was murdered had our telephone number. Yes, it was jotted down in the front of his notebook. You know, the way that you do. I can't think why. I don't know anyone who lives in Granderson Street. No? Does the name Damien Law mean anything to you? Nothing. Oh. And this is a new telephone number here, isn't it, Mrs Martin? Yes. We moved here about three weeks ago. It's more convenient for my husband since he had his stroke. Yes. And the uh, young man? That's our son, Tim. He doesn't live here. He's got a flat of his own in town. I see. Uh, Sergeant, oh. just go and have a few words with the young man, will you? Yes, sir. Please, be careful. My husband's easily upset. He understands more than he can express. Don't worry. He'll be all right. Are you sure you've got nothing to tell me, Mrs Martin? Of course I'm sure. What could I possibly want to tell you? And you have absolutely no connection with Damien Law. I've never even heard of him until today. And where were you last night? Here, of course. With my husband. I'm really anywhere else. Anyway, what do you think of the boy? Kosher, is he? Oh, I did straight. Didn't know a thing. Yeah. Unlike his mother, Rosalie. She knew something? Oh, yeah. Sticks out a mile. Yeah, she's one of them, I'm afraid. One of Damien Law's harem. The Black Underwear Brigade. It's getting her to admit it, though. That's the problem. 
he was sort of servicing them, wasn't he? I wonder how many. <laughs> I wonder where he got the bloody energy. I don't really know, son. I cannot say that I care. Well, I don't care. Not as I would care. I was just wondering, that's all. You know, anyone can pay for sex, can't I? I mean, anyone can. But I mean, that's rather tacky. But with a woman like that, it wouldn't be tacky, would it? It depends what you mean by tacky. If she is cheating on her husband, that's exactly what I call tacky. Yes, yes. Then all right, all right, Sergeant. Come on, let's get back to work. Now, what was the name of the bloke who was organising the ball? Cyril Pierce. All oh, right, well, let's go and have a word with him, shall we? I've seen him once before, that's all. With Jane. I didn't really speak to him. The thing is, when he was with Jane, she liked to keep him all to herself. Do you know Miss Fanshawe well? Not well. I'm not really on the Methodist girl guide scene. No, I didn't think you would be, sir. Or Mrs. Pierce. Your good lady. Have you any idea what time Mr. Law and Miss Fanshawe left? Ooh, way before I did. About 12.15, say? 12.15. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Pierce. Inspector Frost, Anne-Marie and Sergeant Prentice. They're investigating the murder that was on TV. Oh, God, yeah. Damien or something, wasn't it? Jane's fella. I saw him. We didn't know him, though. I understand that you got a lift home. Yeah. With Yvonne and Harvey. And you stayed on, Mr. Pierce, till when? Till about half past one, till everything had been cleared up. I see. And then you were at home, Mrs. Pierce, when your husband came back. Yeah. And neither of you went out again for anything? Not until I went out for my run, about eight o'clock. Apart from that, we've been in. We work from here. This is my office now. And Marie gives me a hand. Yes, that is the coming thing, sir. Working from home, using computers and so on. Yes. This uh, friend of yours, Yvonne, she was waving at someone before she left. Who was that? Would that have been Mr. Law? I don't know. I would like this Yvonne's full name, sir, for me. Yvonne Newbegin. We'll give you all the details. Address file, darling? You won't get her for a day or so. She said she was taking Harvey away for an orgy. Would you like one of your colleagues to sit in, Miss Fanshawe? You are entitled to a solicitor. I know what I'm entitled to. I can deal with it. Uh, I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. Some news that might bring you a little more pain. What is it? 
Damien Law had other lady friends besides yourself. Oh, no. No, you're quite wrong. He saw other women occasionally for, for business reasons. Selling office equipment? Yes, that kind of thing. No. I assure you... And I assure you that Damien Law was not employed by any company selling office equipment in the country. Well, when I said office equipment, maybe I got that wrong. Maybe it was something else. Medical supplies. Yes, or maybe dog food or maybe garden gnomes. No, he lied to you. He wouldn't. No. Then did he tell you about Florence Allott? The poor woman who jumped off the top of the car park opposite his flat? Well, no, not, not specifically. He, he did confess that there was someone before me. And after? Rosalie Martin, for example? No. Oh, yes. Before he died, Rosalie Martin became one of his favourites. He was giving her exactly what he gave to you. Massage and all. No. No, that's not true. It's not true. She told you, didn't she? She told you about me making that scene in the restaurant when I saw them together. But she meant nothing to him. Nothing. She went after him. Oh, she's a slut, that one Damien told me. He loved me. Only me. Can I help you, ma'am? Um, I'd, I'd like to report a missing person. Well, um, he, he might not be missing officially, but I, I can't find him. It's my husband. This restaurant, Jane. I can't call you Jane, can I? Where you saw them. Um, what was the name of it? It was the, the Golden Hind, Forest Road. Mm -hmm. And you made a big scene, so the manager would probably remember. I expect so. Okay, check that for us, will you, Prince, please? So. Had you been following him? Well, no, not as a regular thing. I was going to call in at the flat and I saw them leaving together, so I went after them. So you made a scene. Well, I wonder if you made a scene after the ball. No, you're quite wrong, Inspector. Maybe you wanted him to promise that he'd belong to you and nobody else. And maybe when he didn't agree, there was an argument and you started shouting. Maybe he wanted to calm you down and there was a struggle and you pushed him and he fell through the glass door and you stood and watched him bleed. No. No, there was no fight. He was beautiful the other night. So tender and gentle. Like a god. I knew in his soul he couldn't love anybody else. <laughs> Love? Come on, we're not talking about love. We're talking about rolling about in bed. You think you can't love someone who makes every nerve in your body tremble and come alive? Someone who, who can rebuild the world just by, just by touching you? Someone yes, who... Yes, all right, I get the picture. She could have done it. Rosalie Martin, she was jealous. I'd like to speak to Inspector Frost, please. Sorry, there's no reply from that extension. Thank you. Any message? No. There's no message.
it's Prue. Bedroom too. Wait a moment. Sorry, I haven't got time. Police. Sale of tickets, bar sales, sale of souvenir programmes, sponsors' contributions, donations over and above. Now, if I could have a list of Cyril's expenditure, we might thrill ourselves with a rough idea of the profit. Well, that was all there. Great success, wasn't it? The ball. Considering Denton isn't exactly um, ball orientated, I hope Cyril thought so too. Yeah, yeah, he did. Is it about the man who died afterwards? Did you know him? No. Well, not really. Nor did we. It's terrible. I don't seem to have the invoice for the souvenir programs. Well, it should be there. I've I put it on file. It, it came in a week ago. Mm -mm. No, look. Oh, well. Um, I'll find it for you and send you a copy. Could you? And send it over as soon as possible, and then I can pay Cyril. You do seem to have made rather a healthy gain, though. Even allowing for that. Uh, I told the constable all I know. I was set upon by two assailants. Now, why should two assailants want to set upon you, sir? I can't imagine. Could they have been after my car? No. Now, you be gentle with him, Inspector. What about Mr. Newbegin, if there is one? You know, jealous husband? My husband's in Dubai at the moment. He's there a lot of the time. <laughs> we have uh, an understanding. I keep Yvonne company in his absence. Now, why is it that I want to connect all this to Damien Law? Hmm? You waved at him the other night, didn't you? Not me. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd seen him with that woman. The one who dresses herself up like the Queen Mother. <laughs> but but I, I'd never spoken to him. Same here. I'd really like to help you, Inspector. Well, what's up? I get this feeling that I've met you before. You haven't passed through my hands, as it were. People are always saying that to him. It's his job. Harv's an actor. Well, just a little television these days. And some promotion modelling. Yes. Oh, yeah, of course. It's that, um, that commercial. Uh, uh, the one about piles. <laughs> Carpets, actually. I'll tell you how I made my pile. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, I'll, um, I'll leave you, Mr. Wade, to get over your upset. I do hope that you will be able to remember a few things. I do tend to come down rather heavily on people who are holding things back. How did you get on with Rosalie Martin? Not at all, sir. She's here, as a matter of fact. Oh, she's here? Yes. Mr. Martin had another stroke this morning. He's in intensive care. Oh. I could maybe try and have a word. No, no, no. Leave her. We'll come back to her later. Let's go and bowl a few googlies instead. Oh, Mullet's flexing his muscle now, is he? That's not helpful, sir. Well, it wasn't meant to be. You'll hear about the break-ins at the club. Well, I don't know where I was when they happened, but I didn't do them. Mr. Bocar, we only came to ask about your keys. Bastards. Used to get a good game down there once. Your keys, sir. They're in the post. In the post? I believe I ceased to become a club member last night, voted out by the committee in my absence. 
Yes, well, I think you made your views known with your demonstration. Oh, the, uh, bare ass stuff, you mean? Ooh. Well, I was tanked up. I suppose I regret it now. Why don't you just, uh, tell the committee? Cos I won't grovel. They owe me expenses. And my missus for the catering. But they changed the rules now. We don't pay until the end of the season. <laughs> Even if you're skint, like me. Well, that's their idea. They're trying to weed out my sort. Well, what do you want now? Search the house or something? No, that won't be necessary. But we'll be back. Suit yourself. Do you want my advice? No. Well, I suppose we're going to get it. Take a look at Hastings. Work out how he set me up. And you can tell the rest of them, any more hassle, and I go public. Really, I don't know whether it's me or the heat, but I can't seem to focus. What do you mean, Hastings set him up? Did you see his sweet pea, son? Beautiful. That's it for me when I retire. Uh -huh. Sweet peas mm. and dahlias. Oh, great. You thought about what you might do yourself when you retire? No, have you thought about what you might contribute to either of these cases that we are supposed to be working on? Sorry, sir. I'm just like yourself. Can't seem to focus. I think maybe it's just our age. What do you mean, our age? Your age, maybe. There's plenty of life left in me, plenty of active life before I retire. Retirement's just a state of mind. You can think yourself being old and past it if you're not careful. And turn right here. Yes. Sorry. Well, that's it. Bowker's out for my money. So, what's Mullet been doing? In and out all day, I suppose? Well, there has been a certain presence, yes. Yeah. Do you reckon that I might make it to the canteen? <laughs> oh, what's this? Hmm? Yes. Oh, it's a missing person. Is it? Mm. You know what? Mm -hmm. That could just be our stiff with half a face. What? Where's the original photograph? It's here. Let's mm -hmm. have a look. Yeah. Right. says he's called Frankie Barton. Well, Frankie Barton or Damien Law, it's our man. Hello, darling. Oh, God, what's this now? What are you doing to yourself? Drew Hastings came over. And we did the accounts. Yeah? She seemed pleased. We're all pleased now, aren't we? It's going all right in general, isn't it, Amory? <laughs> Listen, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm not more of a man for you. You deserve better. But I'll get it together. I will. I will. <laughs> And he sipped at the pizza place. All the time he was off with other women. But he was doing it for you and Colin. Do you know if he made very much money? He was always very good to me and the kids. He said he was stashing away a lot for the future. 
don't know where it is, do you? It's, it's just we're going to need it. But go do some checks and see if he's put any money away in his own name. I think he... I think he said he was expecting something big. Money. He, he, he said we were going to be all right. You never suspected anything, did you? I mean, he never changed towards you. No. He was always very loving. He's... He used to say that there was always that, even when there was nothing else. I wonder if he told them that. The others. Damien Law. Man who wore Armani suits and had silk sheets on his bed. So was he a gigolo? Frankie Barton. You what? I He's said, was he a gigolo? Or some kind of professional male type? The problem is, I mean, women were paying him? Oh, yeah, hundreds of pounds. That's a Jeez. Fact, so there are what am I doing here? Oh, Jane shut up, George. You haven't got the wherewithal. Oh, oh, thank you. No, no, I'm okay, serious. I mean, we can't all be irresistible to women. To I mean, it takes much more than just a good body and good looks, doesn't it? You know, you've got to have some sort of courage to do it. You know, like, confidence you've got to have, if you think about it, because what you've got to do is you've got to be able to deliver, right? Time after time, whatever it is that they ask. So, if you put yourself in, it's you. Well, thank you for sharing your observations with us, Jack. <laughs> okay, all right, let's keep it together. Now, can I ask if anything else has come to light? Yeah, we found a bank account, sir. Well, safety deposit box, in the name of Frankie Barton at the Midland on Mill Road. And we're back in Mrs. Barton's application to have it opened. Good. Anything else? Sergeant, have you got anything on the pizza outfit? Oh, everybody said, ask the manager, but it doesn't come back till tomorrow. Right. I want to know anything and everything about what went on at or near the Denton Royal on the night of Bank Holiday Monday. Got it? Yeah. Go. Um, would you mind? Okay. Oh, of course, sir. Now, um, Bob Bowker claims to have returned the keys to the cricket club, I believe. No sign of them yet. Well, maybe uh, I could arrange a search of the Royal Mail Sorting Office for you, if you like. No, 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 that won't be necessary. In any case, at the committee meeting last night, the motion to uh, change the locks and generally overhaul the security system went through unopposed. Oh. So, the old keys will be rendered useless in a few days. You'll be glad to hear. Oh, yes, sir. I'm very glad to hear that. Then, no more incidents, let's hope. Though, of course, it's still important to know the blighter who's been causing all the trouble. Oh, yeah. What are you saying, sir? <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to know what got him mad the most. Ah. Finding the stuff in there or realising he hadn't locked the boot in the first place. <laughs> so what was his excuse? He said he was preoccupied with the committee meeting. <laughs> Mr. Muller is downstairs now having his fingerprints taken so they can be eliminated. <laughs> and he wants Bowker's done too. Oh. Forget it, we're not taking Bowker's prints. They've got the stuff back now. Do you reckon this joker was aiming for Mr. Muller? Oh. No, no, no. I reckon he was aiming for any stuffed shirt who was stupid enough to leave the boot of his car <laughs> open. <laughs> Go on, let's get going. All right. See you lot later. Yeah, this Damien uh, Frankie business. Yeah. Something that I'm not quite happy with. You know that uh, ball at the Royal, the organiser, Cyril Pierce, has he got form? Well, not form, no, but he was looked at a few years back when that building syndicate went down for tax evasion. Yeah, he was cleared, but. What oh, bloke for you, Jack? Yeah? Oh, this weather, terribly hot. Yeah, tell me about it. Those stairs really get to my back. Oh, really? Go on. Yeah, I'm going to hit down the spine. Do they? Oi, oi, oi. Thought you said you had a note for me. Oh, sorry, yeah, it's on your desk. Probably nothing. Blue BMW, double parked outside Denton Royal Monday night, causing a disturbance. Say I moved him on, got two fingers for his trouble. Did he get the licence number? No, sorry. No, oh, pity. All right, go on. Right. Blue BMW. Well, better keep the old eyes peeled, eh? That says that. The old eyes. <laughs> yes, but what was he like? Well, Frankie. 
Well, I'm telling you, he practically had no personality. Well, did any of his friends come to see him in here, like women? No. There was a guy he used to have a laugh with. We all had a laugh with him. You know, funny guy. Doesn't come in here now. A guy he used to have a laugh with. Well, they might even have gone out for the odd pint. Does this guy have a name, sir? No, but he looked just like the guy that does that advert for carpeting. You know, my pile. No, stay. You amaze me, Inspector, you really do. Jane Fanshawe's paramour and that waiter at the pizza place, one and the same person. I can't believe it. You knew him. You talked to him often at the restaurant. Did I? Well, I do go on a bit, you know. To anyone who'll listen. The old performing instinct. Oh, I'd completely forgotten. I haven't been there for yonks. No, but you did go there regularly. I had rather a thin time. Middle of last year. Pizzas, hamburgers, they're very good. Wholesome, cheap food, you know, with a side salad. And you're trying to tell me that you didn't recognise Miss Fanshawe's partner at the ball the other night as the same man used to serve you with this cheap, wholesome food? We'd only been introduced. We never had a conversation. I see. So, it's uh, thin time. It's over for you now, is it, sir? What's this TV work? Paying well, is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, a champagne, Inspector? Oh, no, not for me, so not. Um, wouldn't mind a cup of coffee, though, if this one goes? I'll, I'll, I'll put the kettle on. Would you mind? No, not at all. <coughs> Thank you so much. the trip to Texas. Cancelled it. Cancelled? It was getting late anyway for Colin. The whole thing was more so Frankie felt he was doing something. Well, the application's been granted on the safety deposit box. So we should fix up a time for you to come in. Yeah, I'll talk to Mum. We'll be all right. Yeah. Charity people who give us a hand if necessary. They've helped us before. Charity? The Backbone Trust. The Spinal Injuries. Oh, they're nice people. They do a good job. But it's still a charity, isn't it? Do we have lift off by any time? No, we do not have lift off, but we do have a little chink. Anyone here know anything about a place called Perks? Well, it's a bar, isn't it, in a basement near the market? And escort agency, so called. Oh, yeah. Sampled it then, have you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, no, you, you get the, um, the, the cards in the, in the back of taxis. Yeah. 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 Oh, right. Back of taxis? Come on, then. Who runs it? Uh, Barry Curzer runs that place, Perks. 
Oh, you've been there as well, have you? <laughs> all right, all right. No, seriously, any bother? No. no. He did have bother years ago, didn't he? On the street. Went down for immoral earnings. Been quiet since. Did he? Now that's interesting. Inspector Frost, Denton CID. Men. Male um, escorts. Four women. Yes. No. 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 London. West End. Maybe. Round here. No. 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 There'll be no call for it. The whole idea's mad. Women don't pay for sex. They get paid for it. Excuse me. Asthma. <laughs> and I didn't know the dead guy. I think you did. What was your car doing outside the Denton Royal around midnight, bank holiday Monday? My car? Two of my officers moved you on. Yeah? Don't remember. I think you do, Barry. I don't, Jack. Mr. Frost, do you? Fun time for swingers. I wonder if it was a swinger who did it. When I was in the force in Dundee, we had disciplinary safeguards to prevent paperwork getting to this level. Jack! Mm? Get on with it. Um, these keys of balconies, Jack. No sign of them yet. Well, maybe it was a second-class stunt. Possibly. Awesome, eh? More likely he's lying, not to be trusted. Ooh. Anyway, um, patrol personnel should be alerted. I've already done that. Oh, thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, I've been, uh, I've been cleared of all suspicion. I expect you heard. Yes, I heard, sir. Very good. Big relief. He reckons that they were both doing the same thing. Oh, Jack, in. I hear you think Frankie Barton and Harvey Wade were on the same dodge, is that right? Escorts? Yes, I'd swear to it. Curzon's cleared them off the records, but they were both there, uh, and others probably. Uh, why did he get topped, then, Jack? Well, why was he attacked? Uh, well, whoever did it, I don't think meant to kill him, but uh, probably there was a fight, you know. Pushed him a bit hard, and that was it. Harvey Wade got the treatment, but without the fight. Yeah, but why? Well, why does any pib duff up any employee? Uh, Welshing? Not handing over all the dosh? Well, there you are. Now, what I reckon is Damien, Frankie, whatever you want to call him, right, had got some contacts that would go with him whether he worked for Curzon or not. A bit like these women who follow hairdressers about, right? So what does he do? There he is. He's strapped for cash, got a sick kid, so he thinks, I know what I'll do. I'll do a bit of moonlighting. So Curzon sits outside the Denton Royal on Monday night, watching Frankie coming out to give him a fright. Mm, yeah, that's what I reckon. Why would he warn him like that if he's going to do him over later? I don't know yet. Well, all set for tomorrow, Gov. Hmm? The Midland Bank with Joe Barton and Frankie's safety deposit box. Oh, right. Thank you, Constable. Jane, just a minute. Sir? What are you doing this evening? I'd more or less given up this sort of thing, but, well, 
for a friend of Marguerite. How is Marguerite? Oh, she's fine. And you're so lovely. Lucky me. I, um, I called the Perks Agency first. Yes, well, we parted company. Shall we do the sordid part straight away since you're a first timer? If you go to give me the money now, I'll deal with all the expenses. We'll negotiate extras later. If there are any. Oh, uh, sorry about these slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. I had an accident. I think they're kind of interesting. Really? Mm. Now, I want you to relax. <laughs> I sense we're going to have a truly wonderful time. <laughs> a conference, is it? Brings you to town? Not so much a conference, more a con, really. I need to talk to you, Harvey. Now, give the lady her money back. Putting some letters and papers in the letterbox. Funny, I didn't see any of that. But now hold on, you all you've got to do is open the door and have a look. Your name? Look, just all open the door. Name, uh, sir. Balker, Bob Balker, leave. Off we go, Mr. Balker. Look, don't be ridiculous. Hey, you, you don't need a bank, how dolly. I drank sometimes in the Perks Bar. It's good for business. Advertising people use it. And then one night, Barry Curzon said he'd had a request from a couple of women for escorts, dinner and dancing. He thought they were joking at first, but they weren't. If he supplied girls, why not men? He said, if I had a friend, I was looking at a nice little deal. And the friend was Frankie the Pizza Waiter. Yeah? Damien, as he became you. Yeah. Poor old boy. I could see he had potential. I knew he needed the money. He took a bit of talking round, but. Oh. Then we were off. Never looked back until... Until he had his face rearranged for good? Believe me, I was on my way to tell you everything. When, when they got to me. Oh, Barry Curzon's mob. And threatened to do the same thing to you? Not directly, no. They just said... Not to open my mouth. Now, what did you take that to mean? Started to do business on his own account. Stupid. Stupid. Greedy. I admit I helped him out once or twice. Foursomes. Not entirely my style, but. It's all right, Harvey, all right. Just keep to the point. What? Oh, yes. Barry cornered him in the club. There was a showdown. He said he'd kill him. Kill him. If he didn't stay exclusively on the books. I was there when he said it. And he wouldn't want you repeating that to us. But you should have done, Harvey, shouldn't you? All right, come on. I want you to give me a list of all of Damien's contacts. I don't know them all, but... Did any of them give him trouble? Yes. Jane. Jane Fanshawe. She became obsessed with him. Started following him about. Um, and that unfortunate woman had... Killed us up to. Where's Florence Allard? 
any chance of police protection? Sorry, Harvey, we haven't got the manpower. Are you sure about this? It's in Kolkov. Hmm? Cricket club. All right, I'm coming. Sayers and Morris were on the way back with Boca when Mrs. Hastings called up. She had seen the flames. Mr. Hastings? It's funny, isn't it? Our friend always seems to strike when he's away. Uh, Mrs. Hastings? Just a moment. I understand that uh, you saw nothing before you saw the flames, is that right? No, I can't be on the lookout all the time. No, of course you can't. It's a campaign, isn't it? It's just going to go on and on. No, not if we've caught him. Anything else? Oh, yes, sir. Like he said, we found these behind the front door of Boker's keys. And uh, a letter. Ooh. Ooh, what's it say? Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> he had it in for certain named members, didn't he? Goes on, claims he's innocent, of course. And who are we to say that he isn't? Oh. How long do they reckon it took for flames to get going? Oh, the boys reckon about eight, nine minutes. Nine. Mr. Pierce in, Mrs. Pierce? No, he's out for his run. I thought he might be. Do you mind if we have a chat? Your name appears on a list I've been given, Anne-Marie. A list of women who were seen regularly by the late Damien Law. Yeah, OK. I knew him. I had sex with him. But I didn't kill him. You went out together? No, no, he came here. When Cyril was away. Cyril can't, you see. Damien could. You, uh, you paid him? That's right. 150 quid a time. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a little number like that myself. I don't think you should have any hopes in that direction, do you? No, quite. The ball that you were at the other evening, Damien Law was there with Jane Fanshawe. Is that why you got drunk? Oh, come on. I do get drunk. I drink. I've got the problem, all right? I knew this school with him. He was just a cool little operator. You could have a laugh and a bump with, that's all. And your car? What about it? Well, well, you left it the other night. It seems to me that when you came home from the ball, you sobered up and tried to go out again. But you failed. Because when your husband tried to get his car out of the garage, he couldn't because yours was blocking the drive. Now, where were you going? Anywhere out of here. Are you sure that's all you've got to tell me? Yes. All right. Thank you. I'll see myself out. Listen. Cyril gets to know about me and Damien. He'll kill me. Yes. Listen, we're shelving Bowker temporarily. Anything new on Curzon yet? That's him. His lawyer just arrived, him, sir. There are two women to see you, sir. One of them's that Mrs. Newbiggins. The other will not give her name. Mm, two women, eh? That's interesting. Do you reckon I might be able to do a career switch, then, Prentice? You know, make it in the escort business? Well, I don't think so, sir. Surely you're past all that. I'll have you know that Harvey Wade is older than me. Oh, yes, but he's suave. 
Suave. What's suave? All that suave is, is just getting the right clothes and looking in the mirror. Oh. <laughs> Harvey phoned. I thought we'd better slip in and get things cleared up. Slip in and get things cleared up. You've been withholding information. Well, not really. Oh, yes, really. I've been coming for you. But we don't know anything about the murder. I mean, the last time we saw him, Damien, socially, well, it'd be that weekend when that woman threw herself off the car park. Shopping in London, we were. Can you tell me what your name is, ma'am? Addy. Addy Parsons. Now, how did all this start? Well, that was me, about a year ago. My husband was off to Dubai again. And I do need to have a good time. Regularly. And Addy was at a loose end, so... Well, I saw these cards in a taxi and phoned up Barry Curzon. And he got you a couple of blokes, just like that? I told him I'd report him to the Equal Opportunities Commission if he didn't. Don't. Damien's dead, remember? He was a little darling. He was. Really. <laughs> she got too involved. A bit intense, like. She couldn't see him the way I see Harvey, you know, as a regular. Her husband's not so understanding. Understanding? She really liked him. Damien. It's 1.45am uh, on Tuesday. I just thought you'd like to know that one of your employees Mr. Damien Law has set up in business on his own. He's using your clientele and making a lot of money. You might want to do something about it. Doesn't that let Miss Fanshawe off the hook too? She'd hardly be asking my client to do something about it if she'd just done something about it herself. Ah, well, well, look what we got here. Another one of your old friends. Why don't you go and say hello to each other, socially? <laughs> well, I expect we'll be detaining you then, will we, Mr. Curzon? No, no, Jack. We're not. What? My client has cooperated fully and will continue to do so. Good morning. Why? Copper bottomed alibi. I don't believe it. Oh, I'll show you the statement. After I've been through it, you'll love it. Yeah, I bet I will. Just had a complaint about Jane Fanshawe, Jack, this minute, from a Mrs. Rosalie Martin. Yeah. Oh. oh, Jack, I hear this tape first. All right, OK, thank you. They had a bit put by, but. I couldn't tell you while Bruce was alive. Why do I want you to know I'm not a slut? I do know. Why don't you tell me how it started? It started with a woman in the hairdressers, laughing. Such a human kind of laugh, warm, amazed at herself. Made me wonder how long it was since I'd laughed like that. 
She told me she'd been out with a man she'd hired for the night. So, you went to Perks? And met Damien. How often did you see him? Every three, four weeks. And you'd go out together? Sometimes. Sometimes I'd cook him a meal and take it to him in his room. Um, and then you'd... you Go to bed? Hmm. Yes, always. I needed to. My husband was a passionate man. Goes on being important, doesn't it? Sex. Longer than you think. This case has given some of my colleagues a big laugh. Well, the younger ones. It's as though it all stops when you're 40. You couldn't possibly get excited. You know, for days beforehand, I was like a girl. Planning what I'd wear, the dress, underwear, perfume. And he was always so attentive, so light-hearted. It didn't seem like a betrayal somehow. It seemed like a gift that I'd brought home and shared. And uh, Miss Fanshawe? She wanted them all to herself. Now she never leaves me alone. She phones all hours. She sits out there in her car and screams at me. I don't want my son to know. We'll do our best, Mrs. Martin. The tea is ready. Oh, there's some cake in there as well. Do try some, Inspector. <clears throat> It's homemade. Oh, thank you. Who's coming for you, Cyril? He's got your number. You She'll know you, bastard. That scam with the charity. Does he know I hit him? Who? Who hit him? He was coming on to me for thousands. He tried it again at the ball. I went round afterwards to sort him out. It was an accident. Uh, now get dressed. Where are uh, going? You killed him. You killed Damien. Shut up. Voices, Gov. These two relate to the souvenir programmes for the charity ball. This one's from the printer to Cyril Pierce. And this one's from Pierce to the charity committee. It's a big markup. Mm. And what about all the others? Same thing, Gov. From an event Pierce organised last year. It came up in the stuff we dug out on him. Yeah, a different charity. This one's the Backbone Trust. Frankie and Joy Barton had a connection with it because of their little boy, Colin. All right, come on then, Constable. Why would Frankie Barton have all this stuff in his security box? Blackmail documents. Frankie could have stumbled on a racket. We know he was seeing Pierce's wife. Hmm. And in her own home, where the office is. She could have said something and he followed it up. Yeah. We know that she hates her old man. Mm. Well done, Constable. All right, let's check with the charity. Get onto the treasurer, will you? Well, come on, then. Get moving. Chop, chop. Hello? Brew Hastings? Oh, he hello, Sergeant. That's not very convenient, I'm afraid. Well, of course. If I must. I understand. Shall we say ten minutes? Top, isn't it, Governor? Bring him hard in on it. 
want Pierce nailed. Uh, Mrs. Hastings, would you mind waiting here just for a couple of minutes? <laughs> Better call for backup. Take a look out there first, go on. Where's your husband? Is he gone? Hmm? Damien. Hmm? Damien. Yes. Then tell him. Tell him what? Then tell him about us. He was a good man. Yes. And terrible. It's all right. Yes, I know. I know. Go on. Go on. We're going to be all right now. We're going to be all right. Shh. Carl, get the medics down to Anne-Marie, will you, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Is Anne-Marie all right? Yes. Well, she's going to be, yes, thank you. Are these the accounts? Yes. Right, I'll take them. Oh, it's all right, I'll get it. Oh, Prentice. Look after those, will you? Also, go with the ambulance. Make sure Anne Marie's going to be all right, sir. Mrs. Hastings, I wonder if you could do me a favour. Favour? Could you give me a lift? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. It's just that on the way over, we heard there'd been another incident at the cricket club. Can I have your keys? I told you, Inspector. I, a mere mortal, would never be given keys to hallowed ground. Please. Thank you. What's going on? We changed all the locks. Where are the old ones? In the skip round the back. Hold it, hold it! Send it back! I always said it was an inside job. I hope you'll say I behaved like a good citizen, Inspector, and helped with your inquiries. If I hadn't, I'd have been making my escape, too. Don't like Denton very much, do you, Mrs. Hastings? Would anyone choose to live here? Well, they do say the first six years are the worst. Leave a note, did you? Saying that the fire was the last straw. Something like that. Hoping he'd follow. Knowing that he probably wouldn't. You can't separate people from their passions. I'm no longer one of Clifford's. 
I don't believe it. And this is Curzon's alibi. Here, have you shown this to Warren Rim Harry yet? No, no. Um, oh, you've earned that privilege, Jeff. Oh. Ah, oh, honey, they have. You can't take a tea break. Not with all those files to clear up in my office. I have not got time to do that, sir. I am starting all the leave that is owing to me tomorrow. You what? Oh, yes, sir. I'm taking the ill health pension. Stress. Stress? Yes, sir. It's a very good deal. You should think about taking it yourself, sir. Oh, it could lengthen your life. The man who was gunning for Barton, um, Curzon, was it? The pimp? That's right, Barry Curzon, the pimp. Well, apparently, DCI Peters was correct. He's got a cast iron alibi. Well, get on with it. Hmm? Well, it appears that the time that Barton was killed, Barry Curzon was giving what he calls a floor show with some girls <laughs> at the house of one Rupert Duffy. That would be Councillor Duffy, sir. Councillor Duffy? Yes. Oh, isn't Councillor Duffy a member of your cricket club committee? Oh. He um, was also with Councillor March and a James Nevin. <laughs> they all support Curzon's alibi. Funny that, is it, sir? The way that it's all tied up with the cricket club. Hold on, Jack. Thank you, sir. Yes. No, oh, it's nothing. Sorry. I was going to leave this for you at the desk. Oh. What's that, a bribe? <laughs> it's just... I've made you a cake. The sort you like. Oh. You were so kind to me. I, I think I might have embarrassed you some of the things I said. No. No, no, no. Not at all. Well, I was grateful. Anyway. Gave me something to do. Baking. I feel a bit lost at the moment. Yes, I know what it's like. Do you? Yes, well, I, uh, I lost my wife not too long ago. I'm sorry. It's terrible, isn't it? The emptiness after a happy marriage. You didn't say mine was happy. Just wondering if, um, you know, if you, if you might like to come out for a drink with me sometime. I might. I just need a bit of time. 